I want to thank you, Rick and Susan, for giving me the opportunity to talk to you today about the current efforts that we're doing to try to address the, uh, the epidemic with SARS-CoV-2. So what we're really interested in doing is trying to contribute to the development of antivirals and therapeutics against this virus. So Stanley brought up earlier, there are a number of different types of antivirals that are um, possible. They're both direct and acting antivirals that typically target viral proteins, either enzymes like the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase or neutralizing antibodies that can block viral entry. There are also host-directed antivirals that can, that can target host proteins. The best uh, characterized ones in the context of this uh, virus are entry pathway inhibitors, perhaps uh, receptor inhibitors, endocytosis inhibitors, or acidification inhibitors. And there's also a lot of discussion about immunomodulators that might be used in combination, for example, with direct acting antivirals. So what's known currently about the, the SARS-CoV-2 is that there are a number of uh, inhibitors that can seemingly block infection in cell culture, and many uh, different classes of these inhibitors are being tested in clinical trials. So there are receptor inhibitors, there are endocytosis inhibitors like chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine, as well as the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase inhibitor, remdesivir, that, is, that are really um, being tested right now in clinical trials. So our um, underlying hypothesis is that we might be able to repurpose additional drugs combat SARS-CoV-2, and to do this using our existing pipeline in the high-throughput screening core that I am the scientific director of. So for many years, we've been using high-throughput screening to identify antivirals and to try to repurpose drugs. And so we've decided to try to use our pipeline to take uh, to use robotics to do high-throughput screening uh, using a variety of libraries that I'll get to in a minute with the live virus, the SARS-CoV-2 virus, and the BSL-3 then sustain uh, infected cells with antibodies against viral antigens, quantify these images to then identify potential drugs that can block infection, and then, of course, go on to do uh, validation studies with IC50s and other kinds of efficacy studies in order to inform what therapeutics may be able to move forward into clinical trials. So the first thing we had to do was develop an assay. And so we have a number of antibodies that we've uh, used to try that allow us to identify infected cells. So this is an image of Vero cells where we've stained uh, the cell nuclei with DAPI, and then we've either stained them with an antibody against spike or an antibody against double-stranded RNA, which is a replication intermediate coronaviruses. And you can see we can very readily detect viral infection. And in fact, you can see that the, the staining of spike is in a different compartment than double-stranded RNA, as would be expected by the biology of these viruses. So using this assay, we then wanted to go on to validate that we could, that we could detect the activity of known antivirals. So we tested hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine, as well as remdesivir in, in the cell culture, again, with these Vero cells, working with the high-throughput screening core and Dave Schultz. So we did dose, we did dose response curves where we um, added different doses of either chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine or remdesivir to cells, and then monitor the level of infection, where you can see that we could we see a dose-dependent inhibition of viral infection with calculated IC50s of chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine of about 10 micromolar and remdesivir at about one micromolar. So using this assay that we now have in place, we've started uh, setting up and we've started screening. So we have a number of libraries in place at, at uh, the high throughput screening core. So we've obtained as many of the known antivirals that we can, including some that I've just listed. We also have an in-house uh, repurposing library that has about 1,500 FDA-approved drugs, another 1,500 bioactives, many of which are in clinical trials. We have a library of nucleoside analogs. So remdesivir is a nucleoside analog, and so we decided that we would screen additional analogs to try to identify something that might be more bioactive than remdesivir. We have metabolite libraries. We're also working with a number of entities to use their libraries, including the Medicines for Malaria Venture, as well as NCATS at the NIH, where we're obtaining their libraries to add to our libraries so we can try to capture as much of the uh, space as we can. So actually, right now, the first 3,500 drugs have been tested and we're analyzing the data. So hopefully in the next few days, we'll really be able to identify new bioactives that can block the infection with this coronavirus. 
In addition, we're trying to help a lot of uh, people across the university to develop additional assays that can be used to screen patients. So while, of course, there are clinical assays, it's really important for us to also have a sense of what's in the patient samples for the research side of uh, the University of Pennsylvania. And so working with Holly Ramage, we've uh, begun to develop a very sensitive in-house RTQPCR assay uh, to look at uh, the levels of viral RNA in various patient samples. So she developed uh, all, uh, primers against either ORF1B or against the uh, N gene. And as was alluded to earlier, the N gene is expressed at higher levels than, than the ORF1B. And so we, we decided we would compare these two primer sets against either synthetic RNA or RNA from an, uh, infected uh, virions. And so we can see is that we have very nice dose response. And so uh, Holly can detect basically about one viral copy per microliter. So using this assay, we've worked with uh, Nula Meyer and uh, folks in Mike Betz's lab and Weary's lab to obtain some initial samples where we've gotten uh, blood from uh, COVID-19 patients. And so far, we've only done a few samples, but we're able to detect uh, viral uh, RNA in only one of the five patients. And as you'd expect from the biology of coronaviruses, the N primers are more sensitive than the ORF1B primers. And so we've received additional samples from Ron Coleman to see if we can uh, have a better understanding of what, um, what levels of viral RNA are in different uh, patient samples that are important for us to study. In addition, we're trying to identify what the susceptible cell types are during infection. So we can not only um, characterize the inhibitors that we identify, but also potentially to do high throughput screening in these more uh, relevant cell types. We're working with Ed Morrissey's lab, Noam Cohen's lab, and obtained a lot of commercially available uh, cells to see if we can uh, infect these uh, more relevant cell types. In addition, we're um, developing neutral neutralizing antibody tests uh, to work with Scott Hensley, who has developed a really sensitive ELISA to measure spike. So we're working with him to develop neutralization assays so we can test the activity of convalescent serum and therapeutic monoclonal antibodies. That's what we've already started some of these studies and data will be uh, next week. And we're testing a variety of SARS-CoV-2 inactivation paradigms. So that way everyone can safely work with uh, samples from the patients. So we're testing everything in the BSL-3. So with that, um, hopefully I'll have more to, to share in the future, but I'd like to acknowledge a number of people that have contributed to this. So Holly Ramage has been essential. So she is, was, trained me actually to work in the BSL-3 recently. And so she and I have been doing all of the BSL-3 work. Uh, Dave Schultz and others in the High Throughput Screening Corps have been doing the deliveries. Uh, the processing has been done by a number of folks in my lab. Other people in my lab are also contributing to our ability to study these uh, important questions. We've obtained samples from a number of different investigators. Uh, I wanna thank the rest of my lab for staying home and helping us to flatten the curve the High Throughput Screening Corps. We received uh, the first aliquot of virus from Susan Weiss and Henry Lee, uh, and our, all of our collaborations, some of which I haven't had the chance to talk to you about, about and uh, our collaborators uh, outside of Penn. And with that, uh, thank you very much for your time. <laughs>